Hello again, rail fans. You know, it has been a hot, hot summer here in Central Florida, but finally we're getting those afternoon and evening thunderstorms rolling in and they cool things off quite a bit and they kind of make it uh, interesting. Now, I know a lot of you have been stuck inside with nothing to do because of this COVID thing, uh, but I got the chance last weekend to get out and do some rail fanning. So come on along and I'll show you what I got. I started out the morning on the Brooksville line out of Tampa. I thought this was the day for the Brooksville local, but either I was wrong or they just weren't running it. I did notice this turnout switch. These high profile switch stands are disappearing on the CSX, at least here in Florida. This works the same as a low profile stand, but the throw handle is pushed in a circular motion around the stand. They have high targets, the red and green indicators, so as to be visible at a distance on main lines. This one had a place called the tomato track. No doubt had a diagonal white and double round red target in its seaboard airline days. These days it's spiked and red tagged, which means it's out of service and not usable. So I turn around and head south toward the terminal and quickly find a yard job coming out of Yeoman Yard, engines light. CSX-84 is from GE's Dash 8 era in the 1990s, an AC-4400-CW. CSX added these lightning bolts under the number to denote AC power. It was a big step in the 1990s from the more traditional DC-powered motors. The 84 has my favorite tuning on its horn. It's a Nathan, but I don't know what the exact chord is. This crew is taking this lash up down to Hooker's Point at the port of Tampa Bay, a little over a mile away. They'll haul back empty cars to Yeoman. Afterward, I drifted over to US-41 and heard 0750, a local out of Yeoman. Today, running to Bradenton and working some customers along the way. 750-05-2765, south, clear, stop inside now. He's running long hood forward because that makes switching customers easier, especially down long industrial spurs. Five loaded hoppers could indicate that he'll work Conrad Yelmington rock distributors in Palmetto, but that's just me guessing again. It wasn't long before I heard something giving up the welcome yard limits and the line to South End Valrico. That tells me something is coming out of the Bone Valley and into Tampa. Though not as big as it was just 10 years ago, phosphate traffic still dominates the CSX rails around the Tampa area. With mines, washers, and chemical processors all within a 40 to 50 mile range of Port Tampa Bay, the Bone Valley is a tight, self-contained shipping system that a CSX executive recently called a cash cow. I'm set up at the stem of the Rockport Y, which is also the yard lead from the main line. The train I heard was K813. In the lead of 813 is another 4400 CW. I've seen 813 in the past as a Chicago to Winston empty train of phosphate hoppers, but for some reason they're running it today as a Bone Valley local. Trains like this K813 come in from the plants with ready-to-ship phosphate, offloaded from rotary car dumpers, where it's conveyed to ships awaiting just feet away at the Rockport Pier. These train consists mostly stay intact in their back-and-forth service from plant to Rockport. Air brake connections are specially routed to allow for the rotary action in the dumper.
Rockport is a train-to-ship transloading yard owned and operated by CSX. Built by SCL in the late 1960s, it was part of a peace offering to get the railroad's massive phosphate traffic out of downtown Tampa. Before then, the predecessor roads, SAL and ACL, both had more than a dozen phosphate trains a day that ran right through downtown, creating a lot of congestion. Out there on the Y on the AZA mainline, 0823 is coming up from Bradenton with Tropicana juice loads and some miscellaneous. This time of year, the heat and the rains help weeds in the right-of-way around here grow up really fast. The trace amounts of phosphorus blowing off the cars probably helps that too. I missed 0823, but I heard the Silver Star backing in, so I went back towards downtown Tampa. The Star, Amtrak 91, was already into Tampa Union Station when I got there. Construction of the new level boarding platform is nearly complete. Part of Amtrak's five-year station asset plan, this upgrade will allow ADA-compliant access to trains without the need for special lifts. An even greater impact will be the speed at which all passengers can get on and off without climbing or descending steps in car vestibules. I am not sure how Amtrak got this done. It's hard to make such improvements at Tampa Union Station because of its divided ownership. The city of Tampa owns the actual station building, but CSX owns all the track and platforms. The Expressway Authority here also owns some of the property. That creates a committee, and anytime you have a committee, it's hard to get anything done. About 10 minutes in the station and Amtrak 91 is ready to continue on toward Miami. The consist of the Silver Star has been altered over the past year. It no longer carries a dining car and it often has only one engine, but today it's got two. With four coaches up front, a cafe car, which is a snack bar with tables, two sleeping cars, and the Viewliner Series baggage car. Back out east of town, I hear more traffic coming out of the Bone Valley. Road channel of the BV is 84, 161.370. It's the Valrico defect detector. CSX equipment defect detector. Milepost 2.3. No defect. Length of train, three, nine, five, one. Train speed, two, eight. Total axles, three, five, six. End of transmission. The Valrico cutoff was one of, if not the last, pieces of seaboard built in Florida. It connects the S-Line with the old Plant City to Lake Wales route at Welcome Junction. To mark the route, they apparently just started at milepost zero up at Valrico and counted upward as they went south and east for the 11 miles down to Welcome. That's why the DD is milepost 2.3. Normally on SAL or ACL trackage, you'd have to be near downtown Richmond, Virginia to see a milepost 2.3. We are in Brandon, Florida at milepost S834.67 the corner of Parsons Avenue and Victoria Street, where I know K339 will have to pass. He's there when I get set up. This is one of several places along the S-Line through Valrico and Brandon where you can get some long, straight shots. It's apparently old lightning bolts day for this rail fan. Two more 1990-era AC4400 CWs. CSX and Wobtec recently refurbished and repainted 50 of these, but these are not among those. K339 is daily wet rock phosphate coming out of Mosaic's Four Corners Mine in Manatee County. This is headed for Mosaic's Riverview plant. The railroad calls it East Tampa. Ironically, the distance by air between the mine and the plant is about 25 miles, but the route by rail is nearly 55 miles. 
This is freshly mined phosphate rock that hasn't yet been refined by the chemical process. The next afternoon I had business in Lakeland and when that was done I swung over to Main Street and the A-Line. When I got there a thunderstorm had set in but they were rolling pretty fast today so I knew it wouldn't be long. Rain ended just in time for Amtrak 92, coming out of Tampa to its Lakeland stop. From there it heads north to Orlando, Jacksonville and New York. I moved around to a spot on the Vita sub I'd checked out a few weeks before. Another big storm was moving in and it was near sundown, but I stuck it out for K200. Three big GEs leading this one tonight. An ES44AC-H and two AC44-AHs, all with lightning bolts, all with AC traction motors. K200 was a new one for me, bulk commodity out of Winston, most likely finished phosphate fertilizer. I just barely, barely got the end of that K200 because not half a minute later the clouds opened up and man did it pour down some rain. Uh, fortunately, the truck was only just a couple of feet away. I got all the gear in there without getting soaked. So uh, it was a good day for me. Please hit the like button if you like this video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. Hit the little bell down there to be notified immediately. I got a couple of thank yous now. Uh, first to Brandon Bader who sent me that W sign. He says it came off of the old Seaboard Airline somewhere out there. And as many of you know, I love stuff off the old SCL. I'm a big SCL fan, naturally, because I'm from Florida. Also to Josh Kentner. He's a major rail fan over there in Lakeland. He is our go-to guy when it comes to CSX operations in Lakeland, the Bone Valley, Plant City. He keeps us straight on train symbols, where they go and what they do, especially me. So thank you again to Joshua Kentner for the information uh, provided for the production of this video. Put your comments in the comments section down there below. I read them all. I try to reply to as many as I can. Also, email me. That's the quickest way if you, uh, if you want to contact me. Email me at railfandanny at gmail.com. I read all of those and I reply to as many as I can. So, until we meet up again somewhere out there on the high iron, this is Danny Harmon, out.